Welcome to the West Bridgewater Public Library. I'm Ellen Snowness. I'm the library director here, and we've had a summer of fun and growth and challenges and excitement. And the culminating event of our summer has been the teen essay contest. And today I'm thrilled to present uh, the essay, essay contest winners and each of them will read their um, essay and then we'll present them with their awards. Though these awards being given are um, presented by the Friends of the Public Library sponsored by Mansfield Bank and Bridgewater Savings Bank. So without further ado, maybe we can start with Amber. Can you do yours? <laughs> Amber Thompson wrote a very meaningful essay and is the second place winner. I believe as human beings we have an overpowering tendency of using our past as an excuse not to take risks during our present. We fear that our past will only continue if we risk ourselves for better possibilities. Never will we shut our eyes and go a new way or even discover a new view on life. Our minds hope everything will stay the same. We all have that one memory that haunts us worse than nightmares or made up stories told around the campfire. What's worse is that some of us are missing a piece of a puzzle, the piece that they refuse to fill because they feel it's the only way to escape it, the only way to cope with the idea that someone left and won't return. When I was four, my little sister had died a couple hours after birth due to a sickness. The first time in my life, I was excited for a new friend or even a sister. I wanted someone to hold close when times were rough and, or someone to share an imagination with. At four years old, I just wanted someone who would love me the way I love them. Just when I thought I was going to get it, just when my hands were about to grab hold of the new and coming ride, it slid away. My heart was crushed and for a while, for a while I had lost hope, hope that things would get better. I feared my mom would love me less because she lost the one thing she wanted. I laid awake every night wondering if my dad would get any better. I questioned why I wasn't good enough for her to stay. Soon I questioned if I was good enough to stay. These are memories, the memories that haunt us until one day someone snaps us out of it, until someone special comes and sh they show us a new way. As a worldwide community, we need to, re to realize that risks are adventures that will not only spice things up, but possibly make everything better. Because I feared I wasn't good enough or I wasn't worth anyone's time, I left the best love I had ever felt. It could have made me into a better person, yet I burned it. I left just when things could have gotten better, just when I was able to breathe. Sadly, we don't know what love feels like until we lose it for the first time. I had someone special. When I thought I could rely on the past to, de to determine what was right, my heart ached and everything hurt. Shannon L. Adler had said, forget what hurt you, but never forget what it taught you. In the end, there is always going to be something that punches you in the gut, but it's your job to realize that was one time. I believe that People will one day change. One day they will realize that the world doesn't revolve around the idea of a perfect life. Until we realize our past doesn't control us, I will continue to live my life twice as great just for her, just for us. That was very powerful. Uh, and our grand prize winner is Aidan Ryan, who has, is going to be giving us his essay on allowing 16-year-olds to vote. Aiden. That's good. When a voting ballot is placed in the hands of a 16-year-old, a powerful voice emerges that gives rise to a power over silence. This, I believe, is the voice that will change their world forever. When a 16-year-old is asked to repeatedly endure a barrage of gunfire in a classroom, but the voice is given to a person who does not know how to fix the problem, a voice of change is silenced. When a 16-year-old cannot go the day without a life-saving medication and their voice is not heard, a voice of change in health care is silenced. When a 16-year-old is asked to take the place of a parent who has died but cannot vote, a voice of change in economics is silenced. When a 16-year-old is required to drive to their job but the roads are unsafe, a voice of change for our community is silenced. The argument seems to state that 16-year-olds like me are not responsible enough or mature enough to know the process or meaning behind the vote they will be casting. How many adults are held to that same standard today? Most people who choose their, to exercise their constitutional right to vote have no idea until they reach the ballot box what they are voting for. According to the Washington Post, as many as 43% of eligible voters 
chose to remain away from the ballot box and not vote at all in 2016. The vote in the hands of a 16-year-old becomes the weapon that is needed to effectively change the situations that will be asked of my generation in the years and decades to come. The list of people who fought and were told, quote, they were not educated enough to earn the right to vote are long and dist distinguished. People of color were not given the right to vote until 1870, and that was only for black men. However, voter suppression kept most of them from doing so until the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Native Americans were not granted the right to vote until 1924, and women were not granted the right to vote until 1920 after most of them were beaten, jailed, tortured, and disowned by families before that right was given. It may appear as things are given to my generation easily, but I am among the second straight generation who has not known peacetime. Our lives are being bombarded with problems with drugs and vaping, have to endure the constant fear of a, school, of a shooting in our schools and communities, and our climate is changing to the point of destruction. Some of these consequences mean students have paid with their lives and their voices silenced, never to be the change that their classmates are now fighting for. I can march, protest, create change, but, the, but I am silenced in the ballot box. Not since the Vietnam War protest has a generation been this loud fighting for change and had so much to lose. A voice at the ballot box would change that. Would everyone take advantage of that? Like, sorry. Would everybody take advantage of the opportunity to vote? Probably not. Just like the adults who take for granted the right when they reach 18. There would be lack of interest. When my peers can vote for a class president, but have no say in who leads our state through a crisis, a culture of silence is born. But this I believe. When we do get that voice, we will finally have the power that is needed to establish a change. The, cha the change that tells our country there is a problem. I want to be a voice in that change. I believe Alice Paul was correct when she said, America is not a democracy when 20 million women are denied the right to vote. How many millions of 16 and 17 year olds are having that same right denied today? MLK told us that voting is the foundation of political action. What good is a movement without a vote? I believe I am a part of a generation of voiceless people who need to be heard and the ones holding the keys are locking us out. We could be the key that unlocks a door to a path of change for our country. Let us have a chance to open that door. <laughs> the range of subjects and the passion of each of these essays was really, just really um, heartfelt, and we were just thrilled with it. So one of our third place winners is Emily Ames, who's off at college right now, and this is her, this I believe, statement. When asked to describe a belief or a value that I hold dear and true to myself, I found it rather difficult, as there are many that hold importance in my life. I am a firm believer in strong morals and following through with them in everything that I do, so, one that I feel does a good job of encapsulating this is always choose kindness and positivity. This simple value that I try to implement in my daily routine, whether it be in large or small ways, enables me to have better days that are filled with gratitude and joy. I feel that I came to own this value at a young age as treating others was the utmost, with the utmost respect and warmth was instilled in me by my family. I was so used to hearing, treat others how you would want to be treated, don't judge a book by its cover, and look at the glass half full, not empty, etc., that it was practically second nature to me to act this way towards anyone I encountered. As I've gotten older, I have come to a deep understanding of what it means to choose kindness. While I understand you can't control one's character, I do believe that any acts of kindness go a long way. Something as simple as holding the door for someone, or even something planned, such as volunteering time, can greatly impact someone's mood, and can even lead them to returning the favor, and so on. For me personally, one of the first times I specifically remember carrying out a kind deed was when I was nine years old. In the fourth grade, I had appendicitis and was extremely ill. Things took a turn for the worse. I missed a significant amount of schoolwork. I was losing uh, I was losing an unhealthy amount of weight, and my spirits were at an all-time low. 
Due to an overflow of patients, I was placed on the transplant floor. The boy in the room next to me had been in the hospital almost double the time I had and was in an uncertain and somewhat dire situation. He, as well as his family, was in a constant state of anxiety, wondering when and if he could accept an organ for transplant. However, due to the long days pondering at the hospital, my family and I found ourselves visiting his room quite frequently. This, along with small gestures such as uplifting cards and small gifts during holidays, significantly lifted his spirits. The feeling of bringing joy and happiness to others is truly an immeasurable one. I feel this was a pivotal experience and a moment in my life as I learned the importance of choosing kindness and just how impactful it can be to others as well as in my own life. With this being said, to this day, I still cultivate this idea and find new ways to take a happier, more positive route. As a future nursing student, I can proudly say I am excited to use my compassionate nature in helping others and know that it will be a rewarding experience. That was Emily Ames. Oh, and then one of our third place winners is Willow Weissman to tell us what she believes. Where do I like to stand right where I was? Yeah. Is this good? Okay. Hi, my name is Willow, and I wrote about the importance of being sensitive. Panic overcame my being. My heart raced and my stomach churned at the scene playing out in front of me. I felt my face heat up as I struggled to come to a decision. Should I step in or should I let this continue? The other kids already thought I was weird. If I, interfe if I interfered now, I would just get mocked later. Stop, I cried as I felt tears building behind my eyes. You can't do that. Just let me take them outside, I said, referencing the ants running every which way under the raised shoe of a boy in my class. But they're just ants, he sneered, slowly lowering his shoe, his eyes cast on me to see my reaction. I could hear the other kids in my class laughing at me. Crap. But they're alive. If you were caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, you would hope that someone would show you kindness and mercy, I said, trying to be calm. No, I really wouldn't, he said, laughing to his friends. And then he brought his shoe down to crush the ants, dragging it along the floor for good measure. I walked out of the classroom angrily, mountains of grief, grief rising in my chest. Later that day, I tried explaining the situation to my mom. I was in awe of how cruel people were. Didn't Dr. Seuss say a person's a person no matter how small? You're sensitive, honey. They aren't, but your empathy is a good thing. Nobody was there to advocate for those ants except you, my mom told me. Her reply was nice, but it didn't console me. The ants still died even though I tried to help. I hated being sensitive. It felt like trying to help others only managed to make me a mocked outcast. And as I said, it didn't matter what I did because the ants died anyway. I was 13 years old at this point in time and all of the world's travesties settled heavily on my heart. Three years have passed and I'm now a teenager. I'm no different than I was in my elementary years. A few months ago, I overheard a girl I knew being, fun of, being made fun of by a plethora of my peers. They found her annoying and because of that, deemed it justifiable to be unkind to her. I could see she was in distress. Unlike when I was 13, I expressed no hesitation about stepping in. She's telling you that she doesn't like it when you say her name like that. Why can't you respect her? I demanded. Everyone laughed at me then, just like they often did. But as my mom said years ago with the ants, had I, had I not stepped in, nobody would have been there to defend the girl. Simply seeing how crestfallen she was when they were picking on her made me want to cry because I feel with every core of my being when others are in pain. It doesn't matter if it's an ant or a per person. The world has tried on many occasions to tell me that I'm too sensitive. They say, you should stop being so sensitive or you shouldn't be so upset over this. They are wrong. I believe that it is necessary to embrace your own sensitivity. My sensitivity is what gives me my empathy and my kind heart. It is what has guided me to help, it is what has guided me to help those who can't always help themselves. If people were a little more sensitive, if passersby would put worms back in the grass or stop to catch and release, and release that pesky spider instead of killing it, the world we live in wouldn't be falling apart. So these are our three winners of the West Bridgewater Public Library 2019 Teen Essay Contest, the theme of which was This I Believe. And the range of content and the voices that we heard in all of the essays were just really phenomenal. So our third place um, winner goes is um, Willow Weissman. Thank you. Our second place winner is Amber.
Jennifer Thompson. And our third place winner is Aiden Ryan. Cash prizes will be allotted accordingly. Thank you all for watching, and I hope everyone participates next year.